what is awkward about all these cubes that we drew, other than they're floating in space? What do you think's weird about this scenario? Uh, I guess. Well, what what's convenient, but not necessarily the case with everything, is not every object that's rectilinear sits at a 45 degree angle relative to the way that we look. This is just an easy way to explain it. Let me also talk about cubes in that they become a building block for a lot of the things that you draw, right? We don't just draw cubes, but there's a reason why we use them in, in this, uh, the early stages of describing perspective drawing is that they become, I can, I can carve away at a cube, I can draw some different things based on a cube, but obviously not everything that we draw is a cube. And in fact, it's probably the easiest thing, which is why we start with it. And there are a lot more complicated shapes. But let me just talk about this because, you know, these books are all at different angles. They're not at a 45 degree angle. So, what you really think about, even though I define this as a vertical horizon line and a horizon line and that everything is 45 degrees to it, that's not the case. What will happen is that you will have objects that sit at different angles relative to the viewer and relative to the picture plane, but that actually would be right in front of them, right? So you have situations where there are objects that are sitting not at a 45 degree angle, but they're right in front of you. But basically the way that you treat this object is what? Well, these lines go way over here. These lines come here. This object essentially, I'm taking this cube and I'm rotating it like this. And so what that does is it pushes my right vanishing point further away and it pulls my left vanishing point in. Y'all see that? If I was to rotate this, it's going to make these converge closer to a closer vanishing point and these converge at a, at a slower rate moving out here. And that's all I'm doing is I'm rotating that object. And so if we look at these three books, let's just take each one in, in particular, each one of these books and think about them as far as our rules. So one rule is our angle rule, right? So if we think about this relative to that vertical horizon line, and that vertical horizon line doesn't necessarily mean it's right in front of me, it just means that it's sitting in between both vanishing points. So this is a shallower angle, this is a steeper angle, which vanishing points am I closer to? The right one. Which vanishing point is this object closer to? Okay, so what else does that mean? Yeah, so this is a steeper angle. So if we think about, let me just draw this real quick. So if we think about our setups, this is just, I've got a left vanishing point, I've got a right vanishing point. In the middle, there's our horizon line. If I have a steeper angle, it's over towards the left, closer to the left vanishing point and a shallower angle means it's further away from the right, right? So this book sits somewhere over here. Does that make sense? Just based upon that angle. If both angles are shallower, what does that mean? If both angles are shallower, this one and this one, what does that mean? It means that it's getting up closer to the horizon line. Both of them get shallower, one of them's still steeper. This one's still a little bit steeper than that one. It's just getting closer to the, to the horizon line. Okay, so what does that mean if we're still looking at this? What does that mean for our rate of convergence, our second rule? Which lines, the ones moving towards the right vanishing point or the ones moving towards the left vanishing point, which convergence lines are converging quicker? Left. Yeah, because it's closer to that left vanishing point, they have to converge quicker to get there, right? So these are converging slower. So if this was a cube and your books are not necessarily gonna be cubes, I don't know if I've ever seen a cubular book 
Uh, if it was a cube, which side would we see more of? The right side or the left side? This one's a little bit challenging. It's, I'm going to see more of this side. It's kind of angled facing me. And so that's the way to think of this. Even though, so what happens is my vanishing points change from this book to this book. This one is the opposite. So if we look at the middle book, let's look at just the middle book. Which angle is steeper, the one to the right or to the left? It's steeper to the right, which means I'm closer to which vanishing point? Right. If it's steeper, you're closer to that vanishing point. If it's shallower, you're further away from that vanishing point because it's taken longer to get there. So which lines converge faster? The ones going towards the right vanishing point or the ones going towards the left vanishing point? Going toward the right. Yes, I'm closer to that vanishing point. They converge faster. It's a steeper angle, and I would see less of that face because it's kind of angled a little bit further away from me. This one's pretty close to the middle, so if we look at where that exists, it's probably somewhere about right here. Steeper, a little bit shallower, right? So the second book sits somewhere in here, but they're stacked right on top of each other, right? Does that make sense? I hope this isn't confusing. They're stacked on top of each other, but each book has a different set of vanishing points. So this one, where is the top one relative to our Verizon line? Where relative to the middle Verizon line? That top book is what? Further to the left or further to the right? How many of you say further to the right? Don't be shy because you're correct. It's further to the right. So look, look how much steeper this angle is. Look how much steeper that angle is and how shallow that one is. Right? So if I followed this to a vanishing point, that vanishing point should be, should be really close. My angle, my convergence should be fairly quick going this way and fairly slow going this way. Now, I hope I don't confuse you. But let's keep rotating this top book. Let's keep rotating it a little bit to where that bottom line is horizontal. Uh-oh. What does that mean? My bottom line is horizontal, just completely horizontal. What does that mean? What's that? A two-point perspective, what does it mean? So look, on this one, it was about right here, right? I kept rotating it, it gave us this top book. It actually moved over into this area. Steeper angle, shallower angle. If I keep rotating it, and now at this back binder, the, the binder of the book is just facing me directly. It actually meant that it moved all the way over here and now basically got a one point perspective. It's moved all the way in front of that right vanishing point. And then I've got a one point perspective going back. So I don't mean to confuse you, but I, you might run into that if you stack books up, right? You might run into one that's just like facing you and you're like, wait, 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 wait. Where is that going towards a left or right vanishing point? Well, these don't have a vanishing point. They're just horizontal. But then those parts of the book, which would be these, are going towards the same vanishing point. It just happens to be right here. Okay. I'm curious to see how well y'all do on this. I'm, I'm throwing the challenge out. We've never done this exercise in summer op before. We certainly haven't done it this early, but if you pay attention to those rules, you'll have this video. So I'll have this video up for you to watch, but I want you to take four books and stack them. I want you at a minimum to draw the rectangles that they encompass. If you wanna draw in the name of the book and the author or the cover art or whatever it may be, you are certainly welcome to do that but all I wanna see is the rectangles. I want you thinking about those three rules. So you've got the two videos. 
to help you think about those rules. Um, and uh, I know I'll be around a little bit tomorrow if you need to talk, um, if you want me to look at them. Uh, but I want you to try, see how large this is? This is on an 11 by 17 sheet of paper, so, you know, I want you to, don't draw small. Drawing small is the best way to start off on the bad foot as far as your grade is concerned. Try and make those four books fill up a good portion of that page. Yes? Uh, 